I'm Sean Kinney, and we're joined today by Kiva Allgood of Qualcomm, and we're going to learn a little bit about some of Qualcomm's different initiatives around smart cities. So Kiva, thank you so much for joining me today, and I, I really look forward to learning about what Qualcomm's doing uh, around smart cities. If you could maybe give us a little bit of an overview. Yeah, it's great to be here. I appreciate um, you taking the time. We're really excited about what we're working on within uh, the smart cities and industrial internet space. You know, we're partnering with some of the best system integration partners in, in the world and um, really focused on the problems that cities and municipalities are trying to, to address. So problems such as pollution, the fact that urbanization, you're going to have 70% of the world population in an urban environment by 2050. And that means that cities are going to have to do more with less and technology is going to play a really key role in that in order to ensure that people are still going to be able to get the services and be able to get from really place to place if we aren't able to kind of keep up with that um, then you know you'll start to see a, a decay in really kind of people's sustainability people's livability and how they kind of work together yeah, and I think um, Link NYC is a great example of one of these smart city projects. It's something that our readers have been very interested in, and I, we're going to hear a lot more from you, but just at a glance, this is a, a project to replace about 7,500 payphones around the five boroughs in New York City with uh, super fast, free public Wi-Fi kiosks. And uh, this is just in beta phase right now, Kiva, but I, I didn't really realize Qualcomm was uh, invested in CityBridge, the group that's pushing this project. So give us a little background on Qualcomm's involvement. Yeah, I mean, it's really at the cornerstone of what we're strategically trying to do with municipalities and cities. So if you think about city infrastructure, for example, you have to ask yourself the question of why does a light pole or a phone booth only do one thing? So if you think about the transformation that's happened with cell phones, you know, you used to just only be able to make a phone call, but now you're able to do so much more. You, it's your camera, it's your music player, it's your babysitter, it's your calendar. Um, so if you think about that transformation and you reimagine city infrastructure similar to what we've done with Link NYC, and it starts to go from single purpose to multi-purpose, we really think that technology that's a corner at the Part of that. So in Link NYC, the impetus from the city's perspective was how do they solve the digital divide? So how do they provide connectivity to people who can't afford it and in underprivileged areas? And so we said, hey, what assets does the city have? The city has, you know, the current uh, infrastructure, which is the payphones. How do we make that more multi-purpose? That was at the, you know, that's really at the center. Um, you know, the city's trying to solve a very distinct problem. And we're thinking through, okay, how do we put um, gigabyte connectivity, the fastest out there, um, you know, throughout the entire city? So the next thing we started to work on was really trying to figure out technically could we do that? Um, so you've got a single structure with a, a lot of new technology and a lot of Qualcomm technology uh, inside. So um, we've been working on the project for about a year, really working with the City Bridge Partners, um, Civic Intersection, all bringing our core capabilities and our strengths. Obviously, Qualcomm's strength is innovation uh, in you know connectivity, and you're really starting to see that in the initial testing and the initial rollout. Yeah, what really strikes me about this project is, is how elegant it is to take these pre-existing sites and then leverage that. You really solve the whole acquisition problem by leveraging these pre-existing sites that already have power, that already have backhaul. And um, I mentioned that this is in beta phase right now. So right now, I think just the Wi-Fi functionality is what's running. But tell us what the ultimate vision is for these kiosks and what type of services uh, people will be able to access through them. Yeah, you bet. Um, well, it actually, it's a purpose-built network, so we are laying the fiber, um, and we also are unfortunately having to lay some electric, too, but the reality really is that we are using that that footprint and that real estate to be able to provide additional services. So the kiosks, um, you know, they have uh, two different forms, one with an outdoor screen on it, a 55-inch screen powered by Snapdragon, and that'll rotate content, advertising content, which actually helps pay for the deployment of the units themselves. Um, just as importantly, though, that those serve as, um, you know, you can display um, city services. So if there's an amber alert or uh, a, an alert that, um, you know, there's been an accident of those type of things, they'll, they'll get displayed there, too. And not only um, the advertising on the sides, but then there's also a tablet. And the tablet, um, as, as you mentioned, this is beta, but the form will have the ability to make um, 911 phone calls. 
that'll provide the uh, longitude and latitude and exact location of where the notification occurs. The, you'll be able to make um, free nationwide phone calls. Uh, you'll be able to um, leverage Quick Charge 2.0, which is Qualcomm's technology, to charge your phone. Um, you'll be able to do wayfinding and, and a lot of other 311 services. So you can really think about it as a, you know, in some instances, a virtual library on the corner. So instead of having to go all the way into the library, you can go and download books, download movies, um, on really, you know, throughout the whole city of New York. And you've got a new uh, blog post out that really uh, takes a look at some of the Qualcomm technology that are incorporated in the links. Could you run us through some of the different Qualcomm solutions that are present in the links? Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, we're super excited because it actually includes just about everything. Uh, you know, from from you know a Qualcomm perspective, there's the QC, QCA product, so our Vive, so it's the latest and greatest um, in um, MIMO. And then you go through the rest of the product and it's the displays are powered by Snapdragon processors. Um, and then you, you know, the phone 911 service is powered by um, our partners of our 3G modem. Um, and then as I mentioned before, it's got Quick Charge 2.0. Uh, so from the top where you've got the Wi-Fi, uh, our partner Ruckus Wireless, you've got our um, truly the latest um, MIMO connectivity and then you, as you go down, you've got the Snapdragons and then all the way down to the tablet and the display all being powered by Qualcomm Innovation. Okay, and then I was hoping you could discuss a little bit with us what the success of, of this project means for the larger trends of adoption around smart cities and also uh, put into context how the Link NYC project fits into Qualcomm's broader strategy around smart cities. Yeah, definitely. As I mentioned, the cornerstone to the, our strategy is really working with the system integrators to really um, rethink at the possible. So uh, how do you reimagine those projects? Uh, a lot of the work we do when we articulate, hey, you can use a wireless modem to do this, they look at us like, I can. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work in water, but the the the, the I applaud the city of New York because this is one of the first projects where it really crosses um, different different departments. So if you think an average city has 40 different planning departments, so the lighting guy doesn't necessarily think, oh, I have to think about providing notifications to the police and fire department. So here, in this instance, you've actually seen a lot of collaboration across the different municipalities. That's really what's super interesting for the U.S., is it's really serving as a poster child and a best-in-class um, you know, articulation of what cities can do with their infrastructure across different departments, across and working horizontally. So we look at that as a, as a good, you know, opportunity for us to say, hey, it's been done, and it's been done in probably one of the most um, complex and largest cities in, in the U.S. How do we take that same model and apply it to other types of infrastructure, whether that's a um, trash can or a light post or a park bench, um, how do we really help cities transform and integrate different types of use cases there as well? Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, urbanization is a, is a really important trend right now that's drawing a, a lot of research, particularly from the United Nations. And as this develops, cities really are going to have to get smarter. And one big question for these municipalities as they look to adopt smart city technology is, is how do you pay for it? So I find the Link NYC business model really interesting. It's not only sustainable, but can also be a revenue generator eventually. If you can maybe tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, and that is, I think, a, a great point. A lot of the failed Wi-Fi deployments in the past were people assumed Wi-Fi was free. It's not. Someone has to pay for the equipment. Someone has to pay for the monitoring. Even if someone donates the equipment, you have the maintenance of it. And this is a, um, you know, a franchise entity, and it, it is, um, you know, sustainable on its own because of the outdoor advertising. Now, not every city is New York and not every city commands the same type of advertising revenue that New York City does. But what we're learning is how can you use um, these different types of uh, alternative infrastructure to provide other services. So whether that's, say, for example, a small cell. So you can place a small cell on alternative infrastructure and then be able to sell densification. That also becomes a revenue stream potentially for cities because they're working with the carriers to make those placements happen. So there's different types of technology that can also augment into a similar structure that give you that scalability and flexibility in other markets. And so can you give us an idea of uh, what other types of smart city projects Qualcomm is interested in? 
Yeah, we're really focused in four different areas, transportation, energy, infrastructure, and uh, building. Um, so we've actually implemented a lot of interesting technologies here. On We have our partners, Big Belly um, Trash Cans, which I don't, they're in New York, so hopefully you've seen them. But they have 3G modems in them as well. And what that does is it optimizes route pickup, which reduces um, CO2 emissions and increases productivity. We also have a lot of projects in water. So if you think about our, one of our greatest resources is water. Um, and if you, depending upon what market you're looking at, 50 to 70% of the water in the world is lost between the source and the tap. And that's just because of leaks and evaporation and theft. So that's a pretty easy thing to detect. So we've really been focused on um, leveraging wireless sensors and um, different types of sensors throughout that network to be able to um, you know, identify where the leaks are and then work with the municipalities to fix them. So we're super excited about that as well. Um, and then, you know, to be honest, it's really um, the art of the possible. So how do you leverage you know, technology to increase um, safety and security, increase uh, response times? Those are the different types of projects that we've been working on with a lot of different municipalities, San Diego uh, being one of those as well. All right. So from the macro level, maybe you can look down the line for us a little bit and, and tell me what really the transformative power of all of these smart city technologies taken as a whole. What does it mean for the way that people are going to eventually live and work? Yeah, I think it you know, depends on how far out you look. Um, there's definitely some markets in some cities that are doing some you know, amazing things. I think if you think about infrastructure and the data that comes off those, then you start to think about that becoming a, a community platform and an intelligent community platform that actually provides uh, additional services. And citizens, I think, I'm, I, until, you know, to be honest with you, um, I started this role, you take a lot of these things for granted until they're broken. So, you know, as soon as you can't, you know, wash your clothes or flush the toilet or you know make make dinner um you kind of just think oh uh, or you get the water bill one of those three you know three or four things you you don't really recognize the the complexity of what goes into building those and sustaining them and i think actually uh the true advent is going to come when people start to feel like they have a they're part of that community they're part of contributing that information and that data and that they're interacting with cities in a different way via technology and information so i think that that's ultimately you know going to be where we end up so if you think about a lot of things it even happened in transportation like ways where people and citizens are engaging or in, in detroit for example example where now you take a picture of the pothole the longitude and latitude and that picture goes directly to the maintenance crew for pickup it doesn't get rerouted you've eliminated you know days and days and days of work just by and Austin's a great example as well and you're where you're at the city's done a fantastic job with crowdsourcing and apps and that that to me is the future is that you're going to have a lot more citizen engagement and that intelligent community platform is going to be a service that ultimately provides, um, you know, better opportunities for people, provides innovation within the cities as well. Uh, but it also hopefully means reduced traffic, better services, easier parking, all of those types of things. Well, it really is fascinating to have a front row seat as these smart cities take shape. And I really appreciate you uh, sharing Qualcomm's insight into Link NYC and into smart city adoption. I appreciate it. I appreciate the time.